I'm a 24-year-old male and had just came out of a very long and toxic relationship with my ex. She was my first ever real girlfriend at the time and we started off great and even lived in our own apartment. We weren't the best couple but we enjoyed dating and loved being together. About a month ago, she randomly, out of the blue, started doing drugs. Now, I didn't mind drugs when it came to weed, as we both do it, but she took it a step further to do the drugs that would put you in the ER. Heroin, cocaine, clozapine, all the hardcore shit. This was obviously a major turnoff for me, and when I told her to stop, she wouldn't listen no matter how hard I tried. Telling me I was a square, don't tell me what to do, etc. Her toxic attitudes turned into verbal outbursts when she came home, and after a few weeks, I was done. My lease was month to month, so I got out of there as quickly as I could and moved in with my parents. They originally wanted me to live on my own, but seeing as how bad my situation got with my ex, they let me stay. Three months had passed, and I surprisingly never heard from my ex. It was around this time where I decided it was time to move on and find a new girlfriend. Potentially, even a wife. I was getting to that age where most graduates had started entering the marriage phase. I signed up for Bumble, filled out the usual signups, and selected a few photos of myself that I thought looked good. I am not the most attractive looking guy, but I was confident enough that I was at least decent looking. However, my goal was to find someone I could be with and not score some hot chicks that would seem like they'd waste my time. For the first week, it was overwhelmingly boring. No matches, no messages, and barely any profile visits. As time went on, my confidence in finding a girl was at an all-time low no matter how much I improved my profile. One day, just wanting to relax and keep to myself, I decided to play a few games on my Xbox when my phone dinged. To my surprise, it was a notification from Bumble letting me know that I had a match. With excitement, I immediately opened my phone and saw that I had matched with a really cute girl who was just a little older than I was. We both had common interests, had some nice pictures, and didn't live too far. I won't disclose her name due to privacy reasons, but she seemed to be a great person. We'll call her... Anna. Since it was Bumble, she made the first move, and we hit it off well. We started talking about our interests, schools, and careers, and the conversation never really died. Eventually, we both called it a night, but promised her I'd talk to her the next day. I felt so happy that I found someone who I actually enjoyed talking to and didn't think anything of it. The next day came around, and we practically spoke on the phone for the entire day. The only red flag was that her voice didn't seem to match her photos, but I brushed it off as me overthinking. Fast forward about a week later, we're still chatting through text and that was when our conversation started to get a little more... personal. She started asking me things that she shouldn't have known about. Private things I've only ever talked about with family or close friends. Even things that I've talked about with people at my college that I knew she didn't know. I, of course, confronted her about this, but she then began to play dumb and acted like she didn't know what I was talking about. Said that I had told her, or she had overheard me say it at one point. At that point in time, I gave her the benefit of the doubt, hoping it would stop. But when it started to become blatantly obvious about things that she couldn't have known, 
I lost my shit and began demanding answers. She denied any wrongdoings and straight up blocked me for getting defensive with her. I was pissed to say the least but also felt bad and figured she'd contact me later. Two weeks went by and there was no sign of her and as time went on I slowly began to forget about Anna. It wasn't until about a month later where I was home alone with my friend one night when the unexpected happened. We were playing video games in the living room while drinking a few beers when my dog starts barking behind us out of nowhere. The very second we turn around we both see the outline of someone looking into the room from outside. They took off the second we saw them so I couldn't get a good look of their face. An hour later, I get a text from Anna telling me she didn't want to see me again and hoped I'd have a happy life. A day later, she had took her life due to severe depression and mental illness. I later found out from another friend that she had a history of depression and suicidal thoughts as well as other factors I won't go into. I don't know how she died and I didn't want to know. For the next couple of weeks, I was so upset with myself thinking that I was to blame for this in some way. Either way, this is something that's going to stick with me for a very long time. This happened in my early 20s, around late March of 2017. I was a sophomore in college, and I was definitely no popular kid. The people who I considered as my friends were the type of people who most would refer to as the wrong people. Those who I did talk to, I spoke with very briefly about school-related stuff like upcoming assignments. I'd like to mention that I have autism, and it was often very difficult to interact with new people, which was a major factor as to why I didn't have many friends. As time progressed, I decided that I needed to find someone who I could be with, and not hang out with some edgy teens who didn't give a care in the world. I signed up for Tinder, created my account, and chose a few photos that I thought would catch attention of others. Long story short, I start swiping left on people and swiped right on a few that I would hope would right swipe me back. For the first week, it was ridiculously boring. I got no likes, no responses from my private messages and began to think that it was all a sham. A few days go by and to my surprise, I had finally got a match with someone. I immediately opened it and saw that it matched with a really cute girl who was just a little older than me and while she wasn't a 10 out of 10, she wasn't ugly. We both shared similar interests together and her personality seemed priceless. Her name was Kate and we hit it off well. I explained about how I was on the spectrum but thankfully she didn't seem to mind or care. We would text for hours back and forth and would even talk over the phone once in a while if we had nothing going on. One day, Kate had asked me something I really wasn't expecting to hear especially coming from a girl. She had told me if I wanted to come by her place and watch a movie together as her parents wouldn't be home. I told her that I'd be glad to and I was honestly extremely excited that I actually had met someone who I could interact with. When the time finally came, I got into my car and plugged in the given address into my GPS and surprisingly enough it wasn't too far from my house. I started the drive all the way to the house and in about 10 minutes my GPS led me to a big white house at the end of the street. Almost immediately, I noticed two red flags upon pulling up. All the lights had been turned off and there were no other cars in the driveway even though she claimed she had a car. 
However, I didn't come here for nothing, and I stepped out of my car and texted Kate, letting her know that I was here. Within seconds, she texts back, telling me to go in through the back door and that she'll meet me there. I don't even remember thinking twice about it, but I reminded myself that this was my chance to meet someone who I could have in my life. I opened the gate that led into the backyard. The grass was knee height and there was broken glass everywhere. I made my way over to the back patio, where I saw a table with four chairs surrounding it, as well as an old shed in the back. That's when I noticed that there was something sitting in one of the chairs facing away from me. However, it was too dark to see just what this thing was. I take about three steps forward, and something in me told me not to go any further, and that I should just get out of here. I text Kate that I wasn't comfortable with this, and that's when I see a light from a phone screen inside the house light up, and then immediately shut off. I got no response, and I then speed walked over to my car and started it up and drove out of there, not wanting to think about whatever that was. As I was about halfway home, my car started making these constant weird screeching noises. When I got out of my car to take a look, I then saw what was wrong. All four tires of my car had been slashed, which meant that someone had done this while I was in the backyard. I thankfully still made it home safely, but I called police to report the incident. Turns out that that house had been vacant for three years and nobody was supposed to be living there. They unfortunately never found the people who damaged my car, and I had to go get my tires replaced the next day. I still think about this incident most days when going online, and I still don't know who or what was sitting in that yard chair. This happened when I was 23 years old in the summer of 2013. I was newly single after the girl I had been dating had moved over 2,000 miles from my city to another state and I was devastated to say the least. We had a very strong and healthy relationship together for a good three years and rarely had any fights or arguments. Ever since she had moved, I sort of became an introvert for a while. I spent less time around friends, I didn't go anywhere, and I didn't even talk to my family in some cases. After a few months of going through a cycle of constant depression, I decided that I needed to move on and find someone new. I'd like to note that I'm a very socially awkward person, especially around girls, and the only girls who I knew in person were already dating. One of my longtime friends recommended that I do online dating with a wildly new popular app that everyone was talking about. I don't recall the name of the app, but I took my friend's advice. I signed up for the app created my profile and bio and chose a few photos that I thought looked good. I am not the most attractive looking guy, but I was still hopeful that I'd get a few matches. I messaged a few local women in my area and I eventually ended up matching with a very cute girl who wasn't too older than me named Sophia. She was in her mid-twenties and only had three photos of herself. One was a picture of her and what I assumed to be her friend. The other was at a beach and the other one appeared to be taken at a college frat party. Like I said, with me being a very socially awkward kind of guy, I thought this girl was way out of my league as she seemed very social. However, I was just happy to get a match so I hit her up with the best pickup line I could think of and she surprisingly responded back 
Long story short, we talk for about a good hour or so about our interests when she unexpectedly gives me her phone number so we could chat through there. We switch over to texting and a few days later, I finally decide to ask her on a date. She didn't live too far from me and driving wasn't a problem for either of us. Sophia, would you be interested in going to grab coffee with me? Being a guy who has gotten rejected by many girls, I expected the worst. But to my surprise, she actually accepted my offer and told me that she'd be more than happy to. We agreed on a date that worked out for both of us, and when that day finally came, I made sure I had my wallet, gas was in the car, car was clean, and the usual pre-date preparations. I drove to the local coffee shop about 5 minutes early, but I didn't see Sophia anywhere. Figuring she was running late, I sit down at a nearby bench when I receive a text message from Sophia letting me know that she was about to pull in. About 15 seconds go by, and a white SUV with very tinted windows pulls into the parking lot of the shop with its engine still running. I text Sophia if this was her car, and I got a response I wasn't expecting. Come over to the car. I want to show you something before we go in. Normally, I would be completely oblivious to situations like this. But alarms start going off in my head and something in my gut told me that something wasn't right. Not trying to make the situation more awkward than it already was, I got up and started slowly making my way over toward the car. As I approach the front side door, the window lowers a tad and a voice starts speaking. Based on the pitch and tone, I could tell it was a woman but it was much too old to be Sophia. It was at this point when I happened to look in the back seat of the car. It was a little hard to see, but I could make out the silhouettes of two men sitting down wearing ski masks. Once I noticed this, I told whoever was in the driver's seat that I had to go because of a family emergency. It was obviously a lie, but I got in my car and sped out of there so fast that my blood was running cold. When I got home, I looked at my phone and saw about 20 plus messages from Sophia. Everything from what happened, where'd you go, to I'll hunt your ass down. I didn't respond to any of it and just stayed at a friend's house for the rest of the day fearing that they would somehow track me down and do god knows what to me. I blocked the number and I didn't hear from Sophia again. What I do know is that I wasn't speaking to the person they claimed to be and there definitely was no Sophia. <laughs>